Taproot Wizards just sponsored mempool.space. Let's talk about this. Welcome back, everyone. That's right. Bitcoin waking up out of its slumber, sitting around the 66K region. And of course, no sword is not double-edged. So what do I mean by this? We've got Bitcoin USD fiat exchange going up. And at the same time, Bitcoiners woke up to an announcement that essentially mempool.space is starting to take money from the ordinal wizards, better known as the taproot wizards. For the people who don't know who the taproot wizards are in 2023, um, they received over $7.5 million in seed funding from several venture capital firms. Some of those firms are Standard Crypto, Starkware, Bitcoin Frontier Fund, UTXO Management, which by the way is uh, essentially just a bunch of uh, BSVers that came back to, to Bitcoin. Um, and the Starkware supposedly has multiple Mossad ties. So <laughs> take that, uh, take that, any way you will, um, you can definitely go dive into that a little bit more. I did do a clip about this several months ago where Daniel Prince uh, exposed all of the different connections between Starkware and the uh, the Israeli Defense Forces. Uh, I'll put a link to that, uh, that clip here so that you guys can go back and check it out. Anyways, uh, another company that funded Taproot Wizards, Geometry. Another one, Master Key. Master Key is really interesting. I went to go check out their website and there's nothing there. It's, it's just a, a page that lets you apply for their money. So they don't tell you who the management team is. There's no information about them. Just here, fill in your info and tell us what you want money for. Very interesting. Anyways, uh, Newman Capital and Collider Ventures, okay? And so what the, what the Taproot Wizards did, right, is they essentially helped to normalize and propagate um, – essentially the idea of ordinals and uh, runes and BRC20 tokens. Essentially, um, it, it's just a bunch of casino games on Bitcoin uh, under the guise of having the same qualities uh, as Bitcoin does in terms of the censorship resistance and the immutability. Um, the, the problem is, the problem is, is that when you, when you essentially mint these, these tokens, um, essentially what's happening is, is that you're creating a bunch of dust transactions. And what dust transactions are, are essentially Bitcoin transactions that you'll never be able to actually spend. Okay. So um, the, the idea being, right, the idea being that um, you're going to be able to sell this, this token or um, the, this related JPEG, you'll be able to sell it at some point in the future at, at a high enough price that it doesn't really matter that these dust transactions exist. Um, look, personally, um, I, I just, I think it's a grift. Um, I, I don't really care if, if people choose to purchase these things um, as long as they understand what it is that they're purchasing. And I think that this is kind of the big disconnect that we see in this space is that uh, many people who promote these types of products, um, they like to frame Bitcoiners or specifically Bitcoin maximalists in the light of Bitcoiners call everything a scam. Bitcoiners don't understand technology, all this stuff. And, and really what it is, is that it, it has to do with, and I know it sounds terrible, but honest marketing, right? Like um, we, are, we were having a discussion this morning in Good Morning Bitcoin. You know, when you go into a casino, that, that there's no, um, you're not being misled into thinking that this is a, uh, an investment, right? Like you're not going to the casino and thinking to yourself, the blackjack table is uh, essentially a place where you go and store your value, right? Across time and space. Like nobody has that illusion. Nobody thinks that's what's happening in a casino. But in previous Bitcoin, in previous crypto cycles, that was the major narrative. And um, and some salesmen of these, these ridiculous, you know, the ordinals and the runes and all this stuff, they 
do try to put the idea in your mind that you are somehow storing value across time because this is built on Bitcoin. And, and that simply just isn't the case. Okay, if you want to buy and accumulate Bitcoin, then you simply buy and accumulate Bitcoin. Here, let's take a look at some of the takes that are going on about this, because I, I do think that this matters. Here is a tweet from, New, uh, from Newt Svanholm. These clowns have managed to bribe one of the longest standing and highest quality open source projects in the space into labeling transactions that contain ordinals, inscriptions, and runes as such. It is a shame to say the least. None of these scams are Bitcoin. They all rely on computers that have nothing to do with Bitcoin to be decoded. It is all spam and should be treated as such on every level possible. Spam on Bitcoin makes running your node costlier and thus damages decentralization. In other words, if you, a Bitcoiner, aren't a scammer yourself, you're paying for them. Fight back. Fuck's sake. It's not magic. It's embezzlement. Kind of like a middle of the road person here, uh, because this is an open ledger. Uh, Bitcoin is the money of enemies. Uh, people are going to use Bitcoin in ways that we don't all agree with. That is the point um, of an open network. To Newt's point about all of this being spam, mempool.space, um, all they're doing, right? All they're actually doing is showing you a graphic representation of the data that is on the blockchain. So I understand that some people could be disappointed that mempool.space took sponsorship money uh, for from the Taproot Wizards. Um, but at the same time, and this is something that the uh, that that Wicked, the Apple, said, and, and I think that, that that does make sense, um, is is that nothing actually has changed. And this is a data visualizer. So the idea that you shouldn't be visualizing the data because it offends you, um, I don't know. You know, like I, I don't quite buy it. And of course, right, there's other block explorers that you can use and you're free to use those. And actually, um, I forget who it was that made this point, but you can fork mempool.space. So if you're a coder, Right. If you're a coder, um, technically you can just fork mempool.space and make your own flavor of it. Like there's there's nothing wrong with any of these things. So uh, I, look, I understand the outrage. I, I understand the frustration, but also at the same time, right? Uh, something that I learned a long time ago is that if you stand up for everything, you will fall for nothing. Um, because look, it's just you. There's you're going to spread yourself way too thin arguing about every single thing. And then you got to ask yourself, is this the hill to die on? In all fairness, a data visualizer to me is not the hill to die on. Anyways, uh, that's all I wanted to talk about today. I will catch you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow.